the music it was another thing that was just a big draw to the game and made it feel so interesting. After the game came out, it was like, oh, these guys on Reddit are trying to figure out how you got this effect. Like, what plugin did you use? And all I could reply was model number for the cassette deck from like 1978, because that's what it was. I don't know what I thought the music was going to be. We kind of described, oh, you know, it's like John Carpenter, but also Boards of Canada, and also a bunch of just like totally random things just thrown into a stew and being like, hope you understand this. I don't know what we're going to get back from this guy now. Yeah, he kind of nailed it right out of the gate. My name is Andy Roman, and I make music for video games and film and television. He's a guy that I uh, knew through a friend of a friend from 10 years earlier and saw his name just randomly on like a weird petition that I was signing. He was like three people above me. And I'm like, there's Andy. Oh my God, I wonder how that guy's doing. He makes awesome music. Reached out to him and it turned out he had been doing music in the games industry the last few years, which I had no idea. Something about it, like the vibe was right up my alley takes place in the Northwest in a fictional town and as more details came out just more and more it seemed like my sort of thing. Andy's work has been incredible in being as dynamically reactive as you could ever imagine. Anyways, mom's off on her honeymoon so I've been charged with showing Jonas around this weekend. And it's Jonas? Not Jonah? Yeah, Jonas. It could have easily been like synthesized orchestral music, but there are a lot of interesting sounds I wouldn't have expected to be in the game at all, but it gives it a really unique flavor. I'm not a purist. I'm not like, oh, everything has to be analog and everything has to run through tape. Like, I use just as much digital stuff and computer stuff and plugins that emulate whatever as much as I do real stuff, but it's just fun. Matter. See, this is what reel to reels do. <laughs> All this warpy just sounds like, ah, something's broken. If everything's just in the computer, it's just, it's not as fun as having a bunch of like cool, silly toys. So, this has the coolest meter you'll ever see. It's like a tube, it's called the Magic Eye. Yeah. See that thing, that pressure sensitive keyboard? When we talked about this whole shortwave thing, it's like, well, I could buy some samples off the internet or I could buy myself a World War II radio and figure out how it works and use that. And that's exactly what I did. If you're hearing radio sounds in the game, went through that. Part of the shortwave radio was buying 200 feet of copper wire and like getting up on my roof and stringing it around as an antenna. That's the authenticity right there. Can somebody change the station? It's pretty amazing. He had done so much of it without even seeing the game. So I wasn't scoring to particular scenes or anything. It was just kind of to capture the vibe. And the vibe was kind of this, everything's running through a VHS player 20 times, or it's an old World War II shortwave radio that we're hearing stuff through. So part of the music writing process for this was also the sonic processing, like using samples of shortwave radios or recording melodies right onto an old reel-to-reel -reel before I did anything else with it. And so that led to a good collection of songs, and I'd say 90% of those are actually in the game, like the very first demos I ever did. It's all I can think of to do. It was really cool to actually have Andy come in the office. Until I actually went down to work at the night school studio in LA for a week, I hadn't been able to do a 100% playthrough. So I hadn't gotten the feel of it. So they sat me down the first day and uh, I got to play through the way the whole thing threaded together and the decisions I made throughout by the end, it was almost like I 100% new to me. And so I got to the end and kind of took off my headphones and looked around and everybody was kind of looking at me and they're like, are you crying? Are you crying? 
And I was like, no, but I, I'm pretty damn emotional right now. Like, it was really impressive. When he finally was able to come in and actually play the game and, and be like, oh, this is what it is, you saw him take that, like, next leap into, like, oh, man, this is going to be amazing. Like, this is going to be absolutely insane. Um, and he delivered on that. Yeah. And then he can do, like, different... We played a lot with musical foreshadowing throughout. There are not just songs that play every time you enter a level or whatever, but more there are themes that recur and, and a particular melody might be in a song and that melody will be related to Alex or to her brother who died before or to Jonas. And that stuff will come back based on a scene or what people are talking about as opposed to we're in the fire level, <laughs> time to hear the fire song. Yeah, Andy had his work cut out for him big yeah. time. Weirdly, one of the knobs I'm tweaking is the headphone knob, which seems totally Id ridiculous. But this is the trick with this thing, is you take the headphone out and you plug it into the external in, and then you get this like crazy like... So that's the irony, is sending a $2,000 piece of equipment through a $30 piece of equipment. What's so um, special about this place? The island was a military fort that... Um, it's a tourist trap for morons who want to buy Christmas ornaments of World War II craft. That's been another fun thing, watching people discover things. That Beacon Beach, kind of the, the lead song on the album, the melody is Morse code. It's been that way since we first put that online as an intro to the game, you know, almost a year ago. So that Morse code's been sitting there waiting to be discovered, and it wasn't discovered until like two weeks ago. And so that's like a really good feeling to be like, here it is. And now people understand that, so now people are digging, digging deep. 